If you're so smart, why do you work for Amazon? Welcome to A Life Engineered. My name is Steve Huynh. On this channel, we take an engineering approach to your software engineering career. I used to call myself and this channel Meta, but then some website called the Facebook took my name. And so now we're called A Life Engineered. Here we are. I'm a principal engineer at Amazon where I've spent my entire 15 year career. And at work, I do a lot of office hours. So I thought, why not? Let's do a YouTube office hours where I take questions from my comment section in all of the videos that I've done and answer them online. We'll see how it goes. If you'd like your question answered, um, go ahead and leave it below and I'll get to it the next time I do one of these sessions. All right, let's get to it. First question, Eric and Vivian asks, so the challenge I've had is that I don't have a great deal of real world system design, despite being a senior. Am I not really a senior? That's a good question. So the way that I think about it is that senior is just an adjective to your title, right? So you're a senior software engineer. That means you're an experienced software engineer with some amount of years of experience. And so that doesn't mean anything about system design, right? Um, I will say, that if you are trying to become a senior software developer in a company where the expectation is that you have some system design experience, then I would brush up on your system design experience before interviewing at that company. But to answer your question, you are a senior engineer if that's what your title is. All right, next question. Andre Santana asks, it would be great to hear how you'd prepare for the behavioral questions. For instance, do you write down the stories to make sure you aren't missing crucial details? Uh, thanks, Andres. Um, I just made a video on how to tell a good story. Um, you can find a link right here. The long and the short of it is that you should come up with a set of six to eight stories that demonstrate that you're operating at the level that you're interviewing for. You shouldn't overthink it. There's a shape to a good story. And, you know, what you should do is sort of mine your experience to you know, come up with a set of six to eight like really good stories that are, that are sort of engaging for the interviewer when you get into that situation. A55 Tech asks, can anyone confirm principle? I've heard there aren't a lot of them and an employee can easily confirm if someone is that level. Well, A55 Tech, I am a principal engineer and you can go and check my LinkedIn profile. So I'm, I'm not trying to pull a fast one on anybody. All right, Edward Wong asks, why choose the staff plus IC route over the management one? For those of you that don't know, IC stands for individual contributor. And that is basically a person that doesn't have people that report into them. People that report into them would be called a manager. And so the question is why choose being a high level individual contributor rather than being a manager? The answer is that we work in an industry where we are lucky enough to have high level IC roles. So if you work outside of tech, the only way to you know really get to high levels is to become a manager. But the problem is that being a manager is a completely different job than you know being a software developer. It's super common to have this dilemma. Should I become a staff or principal engineer or should I become a manager? Basically, everybody has this decision to make. If you become a, a principal engineer and you decide that you don't like it and that you want to be a manager, it's not that hard of a transition to become an SDM or an engineering manager. But if you become an engineering manager and then you realize that you don't like it, it's going to be really hard to sort of transition back to becoming a high level tech IC. And I, I find that latter case to probably be the most common one because the manager role is a completely different one than being an engineer. Like there is some tech stuff that you do, but you're doing hiring and firing, salary negotiation, people on your team don't like each other and are having a bad time. You have to manage up to your senior leadership. You have to manage down to your ICs. And so, you know, I, I think that what people find is that it's a completely different job. And so my strategy and the way that I think about it is that you should keep your optionality open, right? And so I think that it, it makes a lot more sense to become a staff or principal engineer if you're in that situation where you're deciding, you know, one way or the other. Personally, I like being an engineer. And so, you know, that's why I chose the staff and, and principal route, but your mileage may vary. Um, if you want to be a, a people leader, 
that's totally cool. It's just a different shop. All right, uh, Kjun Yu asks, do you have advice on how to sell your ideas to leadership? I know they care about different things from developers, but I find it hard to hit their sweet point. Maybe I'm missing their perspectives? The video would be great. Well, Kjun, um, the way that I think about it is that you should always understand the perspective of your manager and the senior management. Like what are their problems? What are their day-to-day -day problems? What sort of like business challenges are they thinking about? The reason I say that is because your ideas have a much higher likelihood of being bought, I guess, if you know the, the thing that you're proposing addresses one of their problems, right? So I'll give you an example. There's a great resignation going on and attrition is really high across the board. If you wanna sell an idea to management that addresses attrition and maybe has some other side benefits, then I think that it's going to have a good chance uh, of going through um, if it's you know relatively low cost or low effort. But if you're trying to sell an idea to leadership, you know maybe it's something like, hey, let's refactor our architecture and at the end, it'll be exactly like our architecture is today, but you know with more steps or less steps, that's gonna be a hard sell. So my advice is to, to make sure that you get into the head of your management chain um, and, and sort of understand how they're sort of thinking about the world. It's just a good idea in general. Gunny Joe Garcia asks, truth, but if you know the subject so well, why are you reading from a teleprompter? Uh, well, Gunny Joe Garcia, you know, I'm not very good at making YouTube videos. And so I, I used a teleprompter. This video, I'm not using a teleprompter, but, um, you know, I'm getting better at it. So hopefully you'll see that as I make more videos. All right, Rodrigo Prates asks, when I compare myself to FANG engineers or in big companies, I feel 100% imposter syndrome. What's your advice on how to get to the next level? Well, Rodrigo, what I would say is that you should stop comparing yourselves to people's social media profiles. It's, it's really not healthy. The thing with social media profiles is that people can spend a bunch of time sort of crafting a perfect profile. And, you know, I think there is an issue if you sort of compare your insides to people's outsides. Not only do I think it's sort of unhealthy to do so, I really think it sort of devalues yourself. You may actually be just as good as the, the Fang engineers. I think that there are just as good people that work inside of Fang companies and, and other big companies that work outside of those other companies. And so, you know, don't worry too much about comparing yourself to others, especially on social media. Uh, the other thing that I'll say is that I have a theory on imposter syndrome, which is that unless you're like really overconfident, sort of like Dunning-Kruger overconfident, um, I think that everybody has imposter syndrome. That would be kind of weird if you didn't have imposter syndrome. My insight is that hearing that other people have imposter syndrome doesn't help your imposter syndrome a lot, or at least it doesn't help for me. I have a ton of imposter syndrome when I go into the office and I'm around all these like super smart people. And you know, you might say to yourself, why would you have imposter syndrome? You've done all of these things. I, I just think it's a, a thing that you're going to have to deal with uh, for the rest of your career. And so, you know, maybe avoiding things like comparing yourself directly to people's like really cra like highly crafted social media profiles is, is gonna be a healthier thing in the long run. All right. Last question. Stuff Lester asks, if you're so smart, why do you work for Amazon? Well, Stuff Lester, um, I work for Amazon because I think I have one of the best jobs in the world. Maybe I'll answer it this way. There's a concept called synecdoche. Sorry, it's a big word that I just dropped on you guys. It's a figure of speech where the part is made to represent the whole or vice versa. And so what I think Stuff Luster is happening here is that you're making a syndenectical fallacy. My career is not like all of the software engineering careers at Amazon. I'm an employee of Amazon. That doesn't make me represent Amazon. All that you read about Amazon has nothing to do with my career. The reality of the situation is that I can work at a lot of different companies. And so if I wasn't happy, I would just move to another part of Amazon or I would move to a different company. I think software engineers have a lot of choices. And I work at Amazon because it's a good place for me. And, you know, I'm sort of growing in dimensions that I think that I need to be working on. And so that's why I work at Amazon. 
plus the money isn't bad. So, you know, all right. So that's all the questions that I had today. If you'd like to ask a question, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. I'll get to it in my next video. Like and subscribe if that's what you're into. My latest video uh, can be found right here. And I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching.